been doing so far this month? Kelly's yeah. doing it already. Success Club already. Yeah. And it's five. the first day. I, yeah. I sold a challenge pack today, so I'm at five. <laughs> Can you believe it? I know. <laughs> You're no, a rock I'm star. I mean, I am working my butt off. She is. Yeah. Like, someday she's sending 20 invites. I mean, yeah, it doesn't just fall in your lap. It's okay. funny when you work hard how lucky you get. <laughs> yeah, but it's so true. It's like every 10 you send, you get one, it seems like. So, I mean, it's in the numbers, honestly. It's literally in numbers, game. That's a fact, Brooke. Mm -hmm. Congrats, um, Maggie. Yeah. yeah. Yay. That's awesome. Super sick. <laughs> That's why I'm not talking, but thank you. It's so excited. We're so excited for you. Yeah, I know. It's awesome. And I am at three points and I'm like a click away from five. I'm just waiting for that. Oh my gosh. That's awesome. Man, your team cut must be stoked. A rank advancement and success club. Yeah. That's Kate Fleischer right there. They were participating. <laughs> What'd you say? If the others would participate. No, I'm, I'm a little competitive right now. <laughs> That's um, actually, that can be a good quality in a beach body coach. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, guys, this is probably everyone. So um, let's get started. Um, if you can mute yourselves, um, just so I don't get any feedback. I don't know why. Sam, are you mute? Why is this not showing me right? Hold on. I'm muted. I mean, I just unmuted myself, but I'm muting again. Okay, let's see. Why is it doing that? It's so weird. Okay, whatever. Um, okay, so tonight I mentioned um, that we were going to talk about, like, your golden ticket and the way to be successful in the uh, number one thing, in my opinion, um, to, to be successful. So when I signed up to be a Beachbody coach, uh, it was June of 2014. I was working, um, I was, oh, sorry, I'm having issues with my computer. I was working two jobs. I was working a regular nine to five as well as waitressing two or three nights a week um, until 11 o'clock in a different state, driving home. I wouldn't be home till 11 or 12. My parents were watching my daughter when they could, or I would scramble to find a babysitter, anyone that would watch her. Um, I didn't have, I, no financial assistance. I made a little bit too much of my day job to qualify for anything that I applied for. Um, I was putting money onto my credit card. I had no money in savings and I'm a super Emerald personality. So I put everything in a budget and try to figure it out. And every single month I was negative. My income was less than the money I had to put out. And I like pen, pen, pinch pennies like nobody's business. So I had no money. I have a, you know, when I started, I guess Poppy was, you know, a year and a half, 18 months or so. Um, and I, I had, I didn't know what to do. I couldn't go back to the restaurant business because the hours where I was making twice as much money than I was before I had her. And then all of a sudden I had to quit that job and take this, you know, silly office job. I left my dream job to take this office job that gave me flexibility with PTO days that I could leave when I needed to, but it was half my pay cut, my salary that what, that I had when I bought this house, that what I had when I had her and um, I had to up and leave. So um, I've always been pretty strong and independent and refused to ask for help. Um, but there were days and, you know, during the winter that I, I couldn't afford my heat legit. Couldn't, put oil in my tank. I mean, I got to the point where they were calling me, um, to put my, the, from the last time that they had come, the oil tank, they were calling me to put my bill into collections cause I hadn't paid them. And it was like an $800 bill. And I'm like, well, what if I just pay 50 bucks now? I'm like, I have, I don't know what to do. I have no money. Like I can't pay you. <laughs> and so I fought with them for a while and you know, they, I just kept putting it off by paying them. Like, and they're like, you can't just send $25. It's an $800 bill. I'm like, well, you're either getting 25 or you're getting none. So um, I went, I went without heat and there would be days when Poppy and I would be sitting, you know, in the, in her little room on the floor and cause we didn't have a, like a rocker chair or anything. We'd be sitting on the floor in her room 
in like 10 blankets. Um, when, you know, when I used to start on these beach body calls, like Nikki would always comment on how I was in like a thousand blankets and like people would joke when they come to my house, like seriously put the heat on, you're going to freeze to death. And I'm like, yeah, well you pay for the heating bill and I gladly turn it on for you. Um, but it got to the point where we, we couldn't do anything. We wore socks to bed and bundled up in blankets. I mean, it, I had no other choice. It was the one place where I knew I could save money. I couldn't not pay my mortgage. Um, and I had to put her in daycare. Those were my two biggest bills that pretty much equal each other that I had to pay for every month. Um, I got rid of cable. I got rid of, I got down my cell phone plan as low as I could. I tried to qualify for WIC and all of those things. And it just wasn't happening. I couldn't afford, I couldn't get any of those assistance. Um, I would never ask for money from my family, nor did they have it to offer me. Um, I, I didn't know what to do except just keep drowning in, in debt. And um, even with working the second job, waitressing, it wasn't enough to pay my bills. So one day Nikki Johnson asked me if, um, if I wanted to join a sneak peek of her group and I have serious FOMO. So I was like, Oh yeah, a group that sounds fun. Let me be in it. I didn't know what it was about. Um, the deadline to sign up was Friday at midnight. So I stayed up after my restaurant job I got done at, you know, 11 o'clock. I remember sitting in bed watching every single video from the past five days because I didn't watch a single one. And one of the last ones, she asked me if, uh, I'm a super procrastinator too. She asked me, or she asked if um, I thought I was made for more. And I was the first time that someone had said that to me. And it really made me think, I'm like, yes, I'm so much better than this. Poppy deserves so much better than this. I grew up in a family where we didn't have a lot of money and I just knew I needed to make a change. So she didn't say how much money I would make with Beachbody. You know, I, I had seen her success a little bit, but I thought to myself, I mean, even if I could make an extra hundred bucks, like that would mean the world to me. That means that I could, you know, pay for my groceries with that money, or I could, um, you know, pay for part of daycare, whatever it was going to go to. Even if someone had told me that I would forever do all this work and just make a hundred bucks a month, I would have, I would have said yes on the spot. That meant so much to me, even if it was just paying for my gas for the month. Um, I wasn't sure if it would work out. I didn't know, you know, what it was all about, what I'd have to do every day. I thought it was a scam. I was like, well, there's no way you can just do things on Facebook and, and make an income. Um, and I didn't really do a ton of research with it. I, I was just like, I have to go with my gut and I trusted Nikki. And I was like, you know, I think, I think I, I'm pretty, you know, strong willed and, and will do anything to make it work. So why not? And I just kept thinking to myself, what do I have to lose? Literally the sign up fee is nothing. Like I, I spent the $140 or whatever. And I was like, I cried when I got my box because I thought I had wasted money and I thought felt selfish for like spending money on myself when I, that's a week, well, half a week's worth of daycare, you know, or, um, groceries for the month, whatever it was, I could have spent that on that, but I decided to spend it on myself and make a physical change because I knew I needed to get healthy as well because I was also at the biggest point I'd been in a long time, probably in my whole life. Um, so I started working and I didn't have, you know, great success in the beginning. Um, I, but I worked relentlessly and I definitely gave up at some points, but I never quit. Uh, I gave up in the trying hard. There were a couple months that were hard. I didn't make success club. I didn't hit my goals. I didn't make as much money as I wanted, but I never quit. And a year and a half later, I have my temperature at the degrees that I would like it to be in my house. I always joke that I don't have to wear pants to bed anymore. Like that's the greatest thing ever for me. It sounds so little, but to go to bed in just a shirt and underwear is like, how I like to sleep, but I couldn't do it before. I truly couldn't afford it. Like I would freeze to death. <laughs> I mean, there were points in my house when it got to 45 degrees and less, <laughs> which is probably don't call child support services on me. Um, we're all alive here, but, um, truly that's, that's how bad it got. And then, you know, I don't let people into that part of my life because it's, I'm not proud of it. I'm proud that I've overcome it, but I'm definitely not proud of the, the things that we had to go through to make it work. Um, I can pay my bills on time. I pay my mortgage on or before the time it's due every single month. Um, I have money in my savings account. I'm probably going to be able to pay off my credit cards, both of them within this, by the end of this month, which is like, it was on my dream board for the year, but I think it's going to be the end of this month. Um, my goal now is to have 25 grand in savings, which like for, for the end of the year, which to me, like is hard to talk about because I don't love talking about money, but that's like, I never thought that would be possible before this. I mean, I couldn't 
I was negative a thousand to two thousand dollars every single month with my bills versus what I was making at this diddly job I have. So, um, you know, and obviously now I'm happier and I'm healthier and I'm living my life with a purpose and um, I'm helping others do the same thing. So, whew, that was like really nerve wracking <laughs> to share that because I don't share it often. Um, but I just wanted to talk to you guys about that. And that's my story. I have about a thousand stories. I have thyroid disease. I'm a single mom. I could go into that whole drama. I could, um, you know, talk about my upbringing and childhood issues and blah, blah. I'll choose that one because it's easier to talk about. <laughs> I choose the money one because it's easier to talk about for me. But does anyone have the exact same story as me? Probably not. Um, can Do people have similar stories or can they even relate in the slightest? Like I know plenty of people that have money that still like struggle to pay their bills and they live to their means and all that stuff. It's But people can relate to that story. And once I shared that on, uh, I've shared it only probably twice on social media, but it's my page blew up and I got so many people talking to me about it because it's not about, I never mentioned how much money I'm making, um, you know, or anything like that. It's that I'm in the place that I'm finally comfortable and I see where I'm going. And, um, people always get to the point where they like try really hard, try really hard. You know, they have some backfalls and then, and then they just quit. It's not even that they give up. They legit quit and cancel everything. And like, you were so close to like your goals and greatness. And I mean, there are definitely times that I could have quit and, um, you know, you, you quit right before like your strongest point or something, whatever they say. The, oh, he, uh, Darren Hardy said it this morning. He said, um, the sky is darkest before the sunrise or something. He was, he was, uh, craftier than that. But, um, but I mean, that's truly how it is. Like, I just wanted to share my story with you guys to help you know that it's okay to share your story with people. The reason that I think in my true opinion, why your story, each one of you story in particular, um, will help you the most with your business is because it will help people trust you. You know, if I had just said, Oh yeah, I just walked into this business. Then all of a sudden I'm making a couple grand a month. Like it's so easy. Seriously, that that's not how it is. And that sounds like a scam and people won't believe it. If I'm like, yeah, there were nights that I stayed up till one, two, three in the morning and there were nights that I cried and there were nights that, you know, I legit put in blood, sweat and tears. Um, but it's so worth it because I can pay my bills now. I think people will believe that more. Um, people will also be able to relate to you. Um, I know a lot of my like niche market is for, I love really busy women. Um, I find that they, I relate well to them because like if people, someone tells me they don't have time or money, I want to like backhand them because I'm like, really? Like you, I dare you to walk a second in my shoes. Um, obviously I would never say that to them. Everyone, the word busy is already driving me crazy today. There's 24 hours in a day. That's pretty much how I, I don't have 25 hours. You don't have 25 hours, 26. It doesn't work like that. So, um, I just feel that, you know, people can see it and relate to you and then it gives you credibility. Um, so I just wanted you guys to hear my story and think about what your story is because um, it doesn't have to be like a crazy dramatic, like I was going to end up on the sidewalk. Like obviously if I needed some assistance, I could, you know, my parents live up the street. I, I would never be homeless. I was never worried about that at all. I was worried about not being able to provide by myself for my daughter um, and myself. So, you know, don't think your story has to be like this crazy wild anything like, um, you know, I mean, Nikki Johnson stories about, um, um, what is it called when after you post-traumatic, no, um, postpartum and, um, you know, I can't think of anyone else's story. Lindsay Matway has an amazing story. You know, everyone has a story, but they're so unique to them. Um, and even though, you know, I didn't, you know, I had, I had great parents growing up. I can still relate to Lindsay Matway's parents. I didn't have alcoholic parents, but I can still relate to her story. Um, I did have postpartum, so I can relate to Nikki's story. Um, you know, even if it's just, I'm sure there's something in my story that I told that you can relate to, even if it's not the whole, the whole situation. So, um, I highly recommend bread, what we call breadcrumbing your story. If you're not comfortable with sharing your whole story at first, <clears throat> breadcrumbing is just, um, you know, like, sharing your story a little bit at a time. Like sometimes I'll drop, drop little hints on Facebook, like, Oh, my thyroid disease makes it 
my hair fall out or some stupid story like that, or my thyroid disease makes it really hard for me to lose weight. I don't go into the whole story of my whole thyroid disease because that's a horrific story as well. Um, or like I'll say something about, you know, being, I said, I did a post about being able to pay for my heating bill with one beach body paycheck this year. Like, um, that was wild to me. That was probably my favorite day ever. Um, little things like that. I'm trying to think of some other like breadcrumbing things, just talking about your story in little snippets and you don't have to go into your whole story and you may have more than one story and people relate to different ones, but you don't have to, um, as I say this, I have a space heater next to me. This room isn't heated, but the rest of my house is heated. <laughs> um, <laughs> the, um, you know, little parts of your story, whether it was, um, your relationship with food, that's a really good one. Um, for me too, everyone has in, in our, um, I'm at a loss for words now, but in our, um, summit training, we talked about at summit, we talked about how to talk about your why. And it was basically that three things, uh, you, I'm sorry, talk about your story, a physical thing that you've struggled with, a financial thing that you've struggled with and an emotional thing. So for physically, physical, it's my thyroid financials, the story I just told. Um, and then emotional is probably my pick one. I don't know. <laughs> it's like 20. <laughs> my relationship with food or my relationship with my, you know, Poppy's dad, anything like that. I have about a million. Um, and then you just keep talking about it and mentioning it and I, people will be able to relate to you and they will trust you and they will put belief in you. And they will, it's the reason they will choo choose you over another coach. You know, not every, there's a, not every coach is made for every person. Um, there are certain people that can relate to me that wouldn't be able to relate to my sister and vice versa, um, based on our stories and our lifestyle. So, um, turn your mess into your message. Um, and they also suggest not to share your triumph unless you have a teaching out of it. So if I just went like, Oh my God, I was so poor and I had no money and I couldn't keep my baby warm really sucks to be me, like, that wouldn't really be a great story. Or if I was like, oh my god, I have such a bad thyroid, and I'm doing nothing about it. <laughs> like, um, you know, things like that. Not the greatest story, but I try. I mean, it doesn't have to be, like, a glorious thing, just how you're dealing with it. Just don't, basically, I think their point of that was just, like, don't be bitching for no reason, <laughs> you know? Um, so, they suggest, um, with your, when you're sharing your story to pick the subject. So one of those physical, financial, or emotional, and then share it with the when, what, and how. So, um, like I started, I started my story with when I first started as a beach body coach, what I was going through and how I overcame it. Okay. Um, and then practice telling it, videotape yourself telling it, which I just did. I recorded this call. Um, legit. I've never been like nervous to be on a team call. I don't get afraid of talking to people. And legit, I was sitting here, I just took like Tylenol. I have like a giant headache. I'm like, Oh God, I can't, I can't even, it's like my favorite people ever. So, um, you want people to be able to see themselves, themselves in you. You know, I can't tell you the number of people that after I posted my, my first story, um, or like, oh my God, like I totally, you know, private messages to me, like, um, or that's that post that I did recently about Poppy and her dad. I mean, I still have people coming up to me and talking to me about that. I got messages from people I've never even heard from before about like, oh my God, I'm a single mom too. Or, oh my goodness, I was you know, raised by a single mom. I got so many stories. I don't know, sales or whatever, that's not what I was looking for, but I mean, just people that could connect to me. Um, it got like a hundred and something likes and comments. And I didn't even think anything of that post. I didn't even thought it was just a little breadcrumb, like, but it, it shook people because they could relate to me and understand. Um, okay. So here's like another good one, which is very difficult. I'm legit reading my notes from summit right now. So it says, um, your story is personal, but don't take feedback personally. That is so difficult. I mean, I got a few comments on there, which I had told Samantha when this person said something. was well, not like negative or anything, just some comment. I was like, oh my God, people. You know, it is what it is. If you can't handle it, you can't put it out there. I mean, they're going to be negative. They're going to be haters everywhere. They're going to people, be people that... Um, don't see eye to eye with you and that's just how it is. 
I always have the same problem with the same person who posts on my posts and she has bad attitude and takes it out on me and whatever. I get, I let it in, realize it's a reflection of her, not a reflection of me. Um, so turn your haters into lessons, you know, do a post about that. You know, no one, you don't, what's the point of being mean people? Like I'm all about spreading positivity. Um, they suggest getting scared, share where you started and get scared. It's, um, really important to be vulnerable and, you know, courage. What is it? It's like, I mean, I think the reason, especially for me that I don't like talking about is because I'm afraid. I'm afraid of what people are going to say. I'm going to afraid of what people are going to think. I'm super independent and, um, like self whatever made. Um, I bought my house by myself. I'm raising my daughter by myself. I I'm good with that. So when I feel like I have moments of struggle and moments of weakness, it's super hard and super scary to share. Um, but that makes, that's probably a good thing. <laughs> so let's see. Um, Ooh, my favorite quote is you don't know how strong you are until strong is the only choice you have. And that's kind of how I felt. Um, when I signed up to be a coach, because I'm like, I have no choice right now. I can choose to do hard things and get over myself, or I can choose to sit in sorrow and make no changes in my life. You know, there's, there's not really, um, there's not really an in between. So, um, I highly suggest you guys after tonight, go think about your story. I know there's the Bo Eason call that I bump 5,000 times because it's still my favorite on finding your story. Um, when I did that, when I did that, if you just type in Bo Easton in the, in the search bar, you'll find it. But, um, when I did that video, you know, uh, I'm sure I could do it a thousand times and get a different story. Every time I got a completely different story that honestly, I'm not <laughs> comfortable sharing yet. So, um, so I haven't, but uh, I highly recommend doing that. And if you're not comfortable sharing your whole story, breadcrumb it and, um, and you know, it kind of tell your story in, in chapters. So, you know, maybe I don't have to go into the whole thing of where my life started and why I have money, you know, issues with everything, money and family and relationships. And, you know, I don't need to go back 20 years, but to go back a year and a half is a pretty good start for me right now. All right. Any questions <laughs> or comments? <laughs> Uh, thanks for sharing. I just want to reach across and hug you. Uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. You're the best. I mean, honestly, I don't know if I could have shared it in front of, you know, a hundred people on a team positive call or on a something else, but for you guys, don't cry. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> um, you know, for you guys, I, I know we had Jenny on a couple months ago um, talking about her story and her story makes me grateful for my life every single day. I mean, Jenny lost her son when he was a little over a year old. And so I wake up in the morning, I'm like, yeah, I'm good. And you know, it's not that bad. I mean, you can imagine, you know, your worst day is someone's best. So just think about that when you're sharing your story and when you're, um, and when you're talking to people, I wish that people would, um, you know, if you don't hear back from someone or they're not purchasing or they're not following up on your challenge group or whatever our issues are every day, just remember, you don't know what's going on in their life. Maybe they're going through some relationships with their spouse. I mean, I have a challenge right now that I, I only know based on like little things she's on Facebook that haven't involved her husband. I know she's going through challenges with her husband. Um, and she hasn't been super active and I'm not going to be like, yo, check in my challenge group. Like I help her in other ways. Um, so just remember that. And, um, just a quick story on that, to put yourself in other people's shoes. It really helps with the story. When you're, when you're sharing your story, people understand why I'm working so hard. You know, it, maybe it'll make them purchase through me versus purchase on the internet, you know, on whatever website or whatever, the, the infomercial, um, because they know it'll be helping me. I mean, I truly had, you know, talked to some guy once and he was like, I'm going to just purchase through eBay. It's cheaper. And I was like, first of all, that's like buying a hamburger off the internet. That's disgusting. Second of all, it's the same price to order through me and you'd be helping my family. And he's like, Oh, okay. I guess I can put food on the table for Poppy. And I was like, hey. <laughs> um, so, uh, Jenny once told me the story of her sister. Um, her sister and her sister's husband were in the airport and they were, um, 
you know, they always people watch and they always talk about how weird it is that couples can sit together and not talk. Well, her and her husband were in the airport and they didn't say a word to each other for the entire morning um, as they were on their way to Pittsburgh or Pennsylvania to go to their nephew's funeral. So to Jenny's son's funeral, it was the only time that they've ever been out together where they literally didn't talk the whole day. And it made them think as they were looking at other couples in the airport, where is, where are they going? Are they going to a funeral? Are they going to, to bury a one-year-old boy? And you know, you can't judge people based on things you don't know about them. So when you're going out and you see strangers, and I always think about that story when I'm at, um, like even like the grocery store and like there are people rushing to get in front of you. You don't know where they're going. You don't know where they've been. You don't know their past. So um, I just think that goes along with the story part of things because the more people know about our story, the more they'll be able to understand why we're working so hard. Okay. That's all I got. Um, so, I mean, that was a good uplifting call. <laughs> On that note, um, any anyone have anything comments? Or? Sorry for that time. I slept over your house and told you I was really really cold. That's <laughs> all right. <laughs> I mean, I do like my house colder, but it's only because I'm a money whore. Like I'll do anything to save a dollar. So um, if I can. Um, so on um, to completely change the subject, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the things going on this week. Um, the team cup is going on uh, right now. We're a week in. This is a short week. I mean, a short month, guys. Excuse me, 39 days. I know it seems like it's not like a big deal, two days. We're lucky it's a leap year. But February goes by really flipping quick. And you think, you're like, oh, yeah, I've got those extra two, three days to, like, bust it out. And then all of a sudden, it's the 27th, and you're like, oh, my God, the month's over. Like, you normally have an extra, like, five days. You got the whole week going. Now you're going to have, like, two days. So just keep that in mind when you're going. I personally have a goal um, to hit Success Club by the 11th. Kelly's already there. Um, she's blowing minds left and right over here. Amazing. Um, so, I mean, you know, do whatever it takes to, to make that happen as soon as possible so we're not stressed in last minute like crazy, crazy monkeys. Um, and for those of you that are in the Diamond to Dollars group, are you liking it? Is it not amazing? I'm like, I've done rank in the bank. I've done the revive group. I mean, I've done probably 10 of these groups and this is 1000% my favorite group I've ever done. I love it. Every time I have like the post, like I'm, I'm, I didn't pay to be in the group cause I'm just with you guys. But, um, every time I do one of the posts, I just save it and I'm posting, like I'm posting that purpose one tonight. I'm like, what great, they're just literally giving us post ideas. <laughs> it's so wild. So um, that's how, that's, oh, 10 minutes. Um, that's my takeaway from it. But I think we're going to learn from some serious leaders. If you've noticed, um, a lot of them, if not all of them, are elite coaches or have been. A lot of them, or if not all of them, are in the Million Dollar Earners Club. And they're only between like, besides Nikki Johnson, she's, she's her own breed, but besides Nikki, everyone's only between five and 10 star. So it's not that crazy. They focus a lot on the money aspect of things, not necessarily rank. Yes. Getting to two star is I think the main objective because then you can get the cycle, um, the, um, quarterly bonuses. But after that, it's kind of when you have to be strategic and it's definitely what those guys do. I know it's what Jeff R. Brewster does. And it seems as though that's what the other people are doing too, because there's no way you can be in the millionaires club at a five or six star without making some strategic moves. So when we get to that point, I really want to talk, you know, watch that Jeff, if you guys look in Mickey's um, videos, she did a Nick, Jeff Arm Brewster did a really, really good call about how like, you know, nine star is actually like the peak to be at for financial purposes. I mean, obviously this is like a thousand light years bef before all of us, but just think about it when you're placing people because nine star, 10 star is really hard. You have to balance five and five. Nine star, you can have four and five, maybe even three and eight. It's something crazier. Two and seven. Two and seven, yeah. So like, like really difference between... And you'd be shocked. Like I'm in the position right now where I potentially could have three diamonds and only be a one star, um, in a couple months. So just, but financially that's a better decision. So, you know, you just, well, not really, but anyways, long story with my business. Um, but you know, <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> but um, so I think it's really interesting to learn from these guys because we're so used to learning from Bonnie and Nikki and the and the shine and the bombshell dynasty. I think it's so cool that not a single one of these coaches is on the bombshell dynasty. Um, yeah, I like that. Right? It's nice to get a different perspective. Yeah. Totally. And I like having men. I mean, that's really. Yeah. Because I don't actually have a lot of men customers. Like, I think that's going to be my target market is male and females. That's awesome. Like, I don't see a lot of females doing that. I see females mainly going. So I, I like having that. Um, yeah option you know to check out the minute and they're not like you know rancors they want they are all about the money they don't care if they walk the stage at summit and if they earn their t-shirt or jacket you know that's not what it's about to them they don't care if they're in the top 10 honestly um that's not their goal those those guys in there their goal is money <laughs> and they want to do it so they can live a life of freedom and there, there's a certain balance to that so they can buy their own trip to bora bora Exactly. With their family and not strangers. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And like Amy Silverman definitely didn't need to be, you know, in the top 10 this year, but she wanted it to, because she's a Ruby personality. She wanted that, you know, same with Bonnie credibility and the um, notoriety or whatever that comes with it, which is, and Nikki Johnson too. I mean, she could have made decisions for her business that would have made her more money. Um, but she chose to do that, which is totally everyone runs this business zone and she's doing fine with money too. So <laughs> Um, let's see. I think that's all. I don't really, I don't really have anything else tonight. I thought that would take longer, but I think I talk really fast. So. <laughs> Did you guys hear or see in the coach news that there's going to be a Shakeology announcement on February 8th? Mm -hmm. Anybody know what it is or have any guesses or ideas? A vanilla uh, vegan. That, that was one of my thoughts, but they just came out with coffee no i doubt it would be that because um uh, because we'll do that probably at summit or something like big like that um like that one was at the surge no they'd strategically place that my guess is maybe like i don't know different packets like different pack or maybe it's added in sorry i lost my slipper um it may maybe it's added into the sample packet or something you know the sample only comes with a six right now not seven i don't think it's gonna be like anything huge but that does bring up a good point um if you guys listen to the national wake-up call so sunday for the 21 uh i'm sorry 22 minute hardcore i can't keep straight with all these numbers so i listened to the national wake-up call and i read that post um i'll have to look at my other uh, notebook it's in the other room um he mentioned two hashtags and and the post had a different one so he mentioned 22 minute hardcore as well as get some get get some yeah yeah and, and then in the post didn't it say one other one or something oh okay i don't know i don't know for some reason i thought i've seen three when just so you guys know it's only instagram and twitter yeah it's not Facebook is what no. I think. I think that's right. That's what the post yep. said. It's only, they're, that the, they're trying to, you know, they get, they got enough going on on Facebook. They're trying to build up their other avenues. Okay, that's good to know. okay. So it's a 22 second video. It doesn't have to be exactly 22 seconds. Though I thought on Instagram, you could only do 15 seconds, but. It could even be a pick too. I think he says it doesn't oh. have to be video. Oh. Think he just wants to see in the background, the screen, your monitor. With the and you can win a thousand dollars. My theory with it is, I'm going to try to get it in early in the day. I'm going to try to be creative. It, they go with creativity. So, like Caleb won the last one when he did it in the banana costume or whatever he was in. Um, someone did it when the BOD was going on. Someone did it outside in the snow, and I'm like, Are you people. And then like the hammer and chisel. Someone did it with like a baby or something, and I'm like. A, Oh, they were dressed as princesses. I don't know. So if you can get creative, like with your family or anything or something, I would suggest um, army related, like, you know, hop in Scott Scrubs or, or whatever they're called. You know that, can I just complain for 10 seconds? Yeah. His at, he had drill a couple weekends ago and they did insanity and he wouldn't let me post about it. Oh, that's so sad. And who's their clown? Wow. <laughs> I know. And I'm like, oh, do you guys need to do 22 minute at your next drill? I get it. He's right. This is it's just, not appropriate uh, at all. And that's fine. That's awesome, he wasn't trying to 
you know, not promote my business or anything. I'm not trying to make him out to be bad. But I was like, and he sent me a picture of all of them doing insanity. And I was like, oh my God. Like, did you try it? He's like, no, I had to work. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> right. Lazy. Yeah. yeah, you should get them on the, on the 20. So yeah, if you have any creative things like that, I don't know what you can throw together. I don't know. It's going to be tough for me, but, um, yeah. if I just get it done, I'll be happy. I mean, exactly. But I'm going to do it. <laughs> Even yeah. if you don't do it to post, I mean, winning a grand is freaking phenomenal, but, yeah, but just the post alone is to, good. to post you want and share it to Facebook too, since that's where all of our market, yeah, yeah, you want to start buzzing about that and, maybe we can have a little strategy session one day, maybe on a call about how to promote it. Because I don't know if you, I have a lot of military peeps in the world and I'm sure Maggie, you do too with being at the shipyard, your husband being at the shipyard and my husband's in the army. And I feel a lot of people in Tennessee are in the military. I'm Marine, Jay's Marines. Yeah. <laughs> so like there's a, and they can get like the massive discount on Shakeology because some, there are rules about it, but they don't have to pay then. 1595 fee. Right. So maybe we could have a little session about how, how to do that. A little brainstorming session. It's crazy for them not to take advantage of it. I mean, mm -hmm. I just feel like I need to take a day and just talk to all my military peeps. I mean, like, yeah, totally. that's a, that's a good they're idea. at all interested. There's like no reason not to just go ahead and sign up. You know? mm -hmm. Yeah. Even if they just sign up for the free membership, like at least they're your customer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think that's an important thing to take try to get as many people to sign up for to be, have you be their coach like someone came up today and, Kate, and was like katie oh my god i got t25 and like well and went on for with for a half hour and you're like one of those beach body coaches right i mean great, she got it from her cousin and blah. someone asked me if she should get it and i said i answered her question then she's like oh great i got it she, <laughs> she responded like four weeks later i was like who what did you fix it no, because it was too late and blah, blah, blah. Anyway. All right, we only have a minute left, so I don't want to get cut off as per usual. But um, good times. I'll see you guys Monday. Thank you for sharing. Um, thank, you. thank you, guys. I look forward to seeing your story. What's Monday? Uh, live Zoom. Boom, boom. Oh, um, right, power right. hour. Power yeah. hour. Right, right, right. Okay, see you all Monday. All right, bye, guys. <laughs> bye. Bye. bye.